So here's the overview of the lot. As you can see, I have a lot of brown areas that didn't fill in. I had a lot of winter kill. The sides filling in pretty nicely. And the hell strips, well, they just look like hell, <laughs> unfortunately. Had a lot of POA annua this year, just a lot. But what survived, I had probably about 40% survive. What survives doing well. Um, I gave it a cut uh, day before yesterday. And you could actually see stripes in it with the reel. Uh, but I have some residual POA that's hanging on, like right here. And I also have uh, some encroaching carpet grass from the neighbor's yard. But I cleared out this fence line completely. And what I didn't realize is that my fence was so wavy. Now, during the winter, I was actually blowing the leaves directly back there and they're just kind of sitting in a pile. But if I peek over the fence, you'd be able to see all of the debris that I cut down and just chunked over the other side of the fence. I had a tree that poked through here, broke the fence. I have a lot of fence mending to do, a lot of fence mending. But what I don't have is shade for this entire area over here has now got sunlight. And I have some established Bermuda that is uh, coming back. What I also found out, I was pondering <coughs> why I didn't have any Bermuda growing along this area. This area right here was not getting any sunlight, so therefore no grass was growing. Why was it getting any sunlight? Well, because I had my blazer and my trailer parked there. So I've moved those to the, this is where the majority of the sand that I had that was brought in and uh, the grass just took a little, it, it died off. It didn't have enough to establish, but it's growing in along the side. Again, with the inch and a quarter of rainfall, we had uh, this low spot, of course, ponded up a lot of water. It has reduced greatly in size uh, from this morning. Uh, one other thing, I'll show you what I did here, is I've got some peat pellets. And I also have baby Royal Bengal seedlings that uh, I have a couple that have tillered kind of tall there. I actually have about four spots on that. It hasn't started going laterally, but I have germination in all of the all of the pots, which is good. But another cool thing, what I actually decided to do is add some color to the lawn. Um, I've got some wave petunias, some salvia. I forget the name of that plant. I have a butterfly bush that I have yet to figure out where I'm going to plant. I have some other... Uh, plants in here, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Another petunia. I have uh, salvia, another petunia, another variety, some daisies. And my uh, winter annuals are still hanging on. It's still cool enough. Today is about 60 degrees. Snapdragons, mums, mums. I have a uh, lily that I planted. Got some geraniums. And this is actually called a, a cardinal columbine. It's a beautiful plant. Have some low-lying, uh, low-growing other plants. I forget the names. Another mom, another mom, another mom in a pot. And have some petunias growing up here. And I believe that's calabrosia. I also have another really cool plant. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Yeah. This is called fuchsia. It has a fuchsia sepal, which is the outside of the flower, and then purple petals on the inside. It's a really vibrant, beautiful color. But what I actually did the day before yesterday when it was raining, I set up micro-irrigation for all of the planters and baskets, and that's going to be um, a separate circuit. I cut back the knockout roses to about six inches off of the ground and this is all new growth all new growth 
As you can see, I have another one that's starting to bloom there. But they're probably a foot and a half off of the ground right now. And, of course, the mountainous lower petalum. Those are six feet tall. I have another video coming up. I'm actually going to be trimming those very aggressively. I mean, very aggressively. They're kind of probably going to be three feet tall and have no leaves. We'll head on to the backyard. So today is super windy, so I had to open the gate separately, and uh, we'll show you the backyard now. Looks kind of crappy. Yeah. So I have some dead poa and another seedling. This is a royal bingle that actually made it through, but. This is a backyard. I'm very proud of it, how far it's gone. I still had to keep the construction fencing up to keep my dogs from darting through there. The pool's looking really nice. Not quite warm enough for it yet, but that rain really helped fill it up. So yesterday, what I actually did is go through and identify some of these problematic weeds that I had. That's what all these little red flags are. I have dove weed. That's going to be a problem pest. The other problem pest are my dogs. <laughs> one of them likes to park in one particular area. What's amazing is how super dense this turf is just from Proper mowing, a little bit of fertilization, and a train every now and then. <laughs> but just like the train, I have to train the grass. Of course, with the rain, you're not going to be able to see the, uh, the stripes that I had, but that's okay. All right, so the train finally left. As I was saying, this lime green grass, it baffled me for a little bit. As you can see, it definitely stands out uh, across, the, uh, across the yard. You can see that flag there? That's dove weed as well. So uh, today it's just too windy. I've got gusts of wind around 25, 30 miles an hour. This is a, another problematic weed that I have in the back. Uh, I think I positively identified this as smut grass, uh, thanks to some people on the lawn forum. Uh, green dock, thank you. Um, I have some other seedlings here, I'm not sure what they are. But again, this whole area was nothing but goose grass and green kylinga. But for now, I'm just gonna let the Bermuda grow where it wants to grow, including the pool. I have to trim that. <laughs> so um, I put a pre-emergent down on February 15th for the front and the back. And that area right there is the only breakthrough that I had. I decided that I'm gonna let this piece of carpet grass live to keep the soil intact for now but it won't be lived for long because the Bermuda is coming to get it oh smut grass That's some Bermuda that's growing here this whole area was a very low area all the way up through here this is underwater last night I went to bed of course, this is the area the dogs come through here. They wrestle around. Pretty much where there's bare dirt, you'll see the hoof prints there. The dogs have already run through here this morning. The dogs like to run along the fence line. Um, and this is what I call the chute. They come out of the door and just roll through here. And they round the corner. See, I have more dove weed right there or there anyways I'm not going to identify every single weed that's here on the lawn 
Now this area I had a hard time getting any grass to grow here. It was overgrown with weeds. Um, I still have a little bit of difficulty because my dog likes to dig. But one thing I found interesting is that the downspout for my gutters comes through here. And with the rainfall that we had yesterday, I left this in one place. This area right here was underwater along with the swale along the back. It was underwater as well. But as you can see, it's completely dry. What does that mean? I'm not sure. It means perhaps my amendments are working. Uh, the other thing I'll show you real quick. So here's the grass that's growing around the pool. What I actually had to do, I was running my pool pump off of an extension cord. Bad idea. But the outlet is only right there. Well, it kept tripping the breakers, so what I actually wound up doing is running a separate 100 amp service down, bearing the wires 18 inches, and going into my shed, and I have a panel on the other side of the box. Other than that, that's the, uh, that's the grand tour. So, I will give you a slow pan of the backyard. Hopefully you're still with me. The other issue, I have Mr. Weed Bed here on the other side. Cut down a few of the limbs on that tree. Cut several of them back off of the oak tree over there. It's so nice to be able to see that whole area is no longer covered by mimosas. It's getting all kinds of sunlight. My main issue in getting some of these these areas to grow back here is the dogs. I have to be strategic about where I place objects so the dogs don't kill everything. Anyways, there we are for the back. So, let's talk about uh, what would... Uh, what have I learned from this as far as planning to renovate a lawn? Well, first thing, I wouldn't have waited until August to do my renovation. If you're going to seed Bermuda, now's the time to do it. Uh, you don't want to do it any later than June 15th. That's the latest, absolute latest, that you want to seed Bermuda. The second thing I learned about seeding a yard, uh, Bermuda, Bermuda yard from seed, is to not avoid the use of any chemicals or pre-emergent. Um, this year I had a tremendous POA problem and that could have been, been alleviated by the simple use of a pre-emergent and that way the grass wouldn't have had to compete as hard as it has for the Bermuda and I wouldn't have so many uh, POA seeds in the yard that I know I currently do have now. Uh, the other thing is that when I was handpicking crabgrass and other goosegrass, uh, quinchloric is actually safe to use on seeded Bermuda grass. Uh, you just have to look at your label. I believe you can use it up to a week or three weeks after emergent, uh, emergence of the seedling. So that would be the second thing that I learned. Don't be afraid to use herbicides or other chemical controls pre-emergence and post-emergence on your newly seeded Bermuda yard. I would say another thing that I learned is not to be too aggressive with your mowing. Uh, one of the things that I learned with my particular grass type is that it looked good at an inch. Uh, during September that was pretty much the only time I had a full yard of Bermuda that I could mow with the Scott's push mower. Uh, it looked good at an inch and when I got the greens mower I dropped it down to three quarters of an inch and uh, I, I think it it would have had a better chance of storing up some more carbohydrates to last through the winter and that was the main issue that I would say I had with this whole seeding is that the uh, uh, or the renovation is that I seeded too late and the plants just didn't have enough time to harden off before uh, the weather turned cooler and it went dormant and some of it never woke up. 
So that's the, uh, the tour of the lawn. And I wanted to let you know, as far as my fertilization practices for this year, what I started out with, my first application was a Lesco product on March the 24th. It was, uh, I think it was a 3 or a uh, 2404, 2403, something like that. It worked out to be one pound per thousand of nitrogen um, on the lawn. I'll be applying the Humic 12, RGS, and Air 8 bi-weekly. Bi-monthly, I'll be fertilizing with the uh, green punch. And then on the months that I'm not fertilizing with the green punch, I'll be using Melorganite. It's too cool right now. It's 60 degrees today. And the temperatures just haven't gotten warm enough for the microbial activity to be effective on the Melorganite. So I don't believe that... Uh, that it would be prudent at this time to fertilize with that particular product. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Hopefully I've provided you with some information so you can see uh, what to do and what not to do uh, and giving you a little bit of information about uh, what it takes to renovate a lawn and the results you can expect to see should you follow my, uh, my schedule, which I would advise against. I recommend that you, if you're planning to renovate your lawn, go ahead and start this time of year. If you're warm season, if you plan to do it from seed, go ahead and start this time of year. Uh, I've said before that uh, to talking to other people that if I was going to renovate my lawn, I will have already had my second application of glyphosate down and be ready to seed come Mother's Day, which uh, is not too long. Come Father's Day, They'll have a nice lawn that will last you uh, as long as you're willing to take care of it. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. Hopefully you've learned some information about it. And you'll stay tuned to my channel to see the progress and the updates that are coming forward. I have lots of projects um, going on around the house. I'm only one person who can do so much in the yard. But uh, I'll, I'll try and make videos of the projects as they come along. Thanks.